Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com, and today I want to show you how to set up a low voltage, I don't know what you'd call this, it's, it's, it's pretty much how to put a jack in the wall that didn't have a jack before, and you're going to cut a hole in this drywall. Now what you shouldn't use, or what you don't have to use, is one of these blue boxes that have wings on. I'm not going to just show you the blue box, because there's a lot easier way to do it than with the blue box. But today I'm going to show you something that's fantastic, okay? That's going to save you a lot of time, and it's about the same price as a blue box, maybe even less expensive. And I'm going to show you what it is, and that's these little metal plaster rings. And so we're going to put a plaster ring in today, and I'm going to show you how to do it. You don't need to worry about measuring it or using a pencil and everything else. Come on, man, I put in thousands of these. And if I'm going to put in these things, I want to do it as fast as possible, because I'd like to go home at the end of the day. I don't want to hang around for an extra hour because I put four or five of these in and I, and I got a pencil and I made sure it was this way or that way. I just put them in, they look great. No one's ever complained. They hold, they do exactly what you need done and everything else. They're great little devices, saving, labor savings device. You don't need to put a blue box. Now, the only time you have to put a blue box in is if you're working on, let's say, a firewall then you're gonna to have to have something in there. I actually put in metal boxes on firewalls. That's even better yet. So if you're not dealing with a firewall, then you don't have to put in a blue box or a metal box or anything else. And if it's low voltage, okay, this is just for low voltage. This isn't gonna work 110. So you don't wanna use this for a 110 outlet. You wanna use this for low voltage. So the first thing I do is I turn it over and I put it up against the wall and you can use like, if you want to, you can use a level at this point and also measure it from the bottom up so you don't have a jack that's real high and another one over here that's low. So you do want to measure it from the, the ground up to make sure that this right here is at the same level as the other jack over here. So it, it doesn't look weird, okay? And then you want to, you, you know, I usually just view this. So what I do to get the, the, the distance to the ground is I usually take my drywall, the saw, and it hits the ground, and then I'm going to line it up right there. So what I do is I make four little holes, four little indentations here. And I'm going to hold it still until I finish that. Don't have to be precise. This has a little bit of wiggle room. You can adjust it. So if you notice, I got four holes here. So the first direction I want to go in, okay, I don't want to go start and go all the way down because there might be a stud right here. And if I go all the way down on both sides, can't put the outlet there. So the way I deal with that is I go horizontal first to see if I run into a stub. And again, you don't have to be precise. You see how I missed that hole over there? That's fine. I'm going to show you how this naturally adjusts. And I'm going to go straight in. Now, normally when I'm showing you how to cut a hole in a drywall, I show you the pumpkin cut. And that's in another video. You can take a look at that and see what you think. And it's really a great idea if you need to cut an access hole uh, so you can get behind the wall and then repair the hole later. But here I'm just going to cut right through, straight in. Okay, so now I have the hole. So this little piece of metal has little guides to it. It also strengthens it up. So this is really nice. So what you do is you see if it fits, right? Okay, that fits, right? Looks great. So the first thing you do is as soon as you push it in, you push these around and bend them up. Now, I don't leave them like this because they wiggle all over the place. They don't look good, everything else, or it can uh, create problems with alignments, things like that. Okay, I'm going to take my channel locks, and I'm going to grab it here at the bottom. 
Here, let me get a different angle here on the camera. So I'm gonna take the bottom here, and I'm gonna get it on that ridge right there. I'm not gonna go all the way in. I'm just gonna go like halfway to the drywall, and then I'm gonna clamp it. <laughs> it's not working the way I want it to. There you go. I'm going to crimp it and then I'm going to go back in and bend it down again and that's going to be really tight. I do it both sides. There is no up or down on these things. Either way will work. But that tightens it up. It isn't going to move. It's nice and solid. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna reach in, I'm gonna grab my wire, and I'm gonna pull it out. And if they haven't painted yet, I don't want to set finish, which is put the jack on the wall, things like that. But right here, you got the screw mounts to where you can put your low voltage faceplate on there. The faceplate that you're gonna see, the RJ45 keystone jacks or whatever else you're gonna use keystone wise, HDMI, stuff like that, you can do all those but the face plate is gonna be right on top. Good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach through the wall and I'm gonna grab my cable. Just barely get my hand in there, but I'm gonna grab my cable and I'm gonna pull it out. And then I'm gonna put a jack on the end of that cable. Now, the standard that I always use is I use my elbow to my hand. So if I'm going to pull, you know, how much do you pull out? I'm gonna use my hand and I'm gonna to go to my elbow. And I found out that that's the best way, that's the distance you need. Now, a little funny story is a new cabler was cabling years ago, I mean decades ago. And I sent him out there to do the cable and he was positive he could do it, no problem at all. And I said, great. And so when I went out and I looked at the cable and the pre-cable, this is called pre-cable when you pull the cable, when you start to put jacks on the end and face plates, that's called set finish. But he, he pulled the cable out, but he only pulled it out that far. <laughs> and it's like I said, yeah, it's, it's gonna take me an hour. You know, uh, 10 times longer than it's gonna take if you gave me the right length. So he learned his lesson. <laughs> okay, so now I, I, I jacked it. Okay, and I got a jack on there and everything else on the face plate. This is called a face plate. And it lines up perfect. You see that? Perfect. I just need the screws. I'm not going to screw it in. This is just a test. You know how to screw holes. I mean screws. You know how to use a screwdriver. But then it looks like that. So you should always have a little bit extra behind the wall, by the way. I just fold it up like that. And I shove it in. Just a little extra. And it fits perfect. I mean, this is like fantastic. This, this little piece of metal i mean it's the easiest thing in the world to put in a jack and I, of course i always tighten them up and that's how i tighten them up using the channel locks and all y you know <laughs> i have to tell you some things here uh, so this is all ready to go on the wall and that's called set finish uh, when you put the screws in it's all done everything else and i remember i was asked to be a consultant out on a, a serious install and um, when I was walking through, I noticed they were set and finish. And not only they were setting finish, but they're also plugging in telephones. And I said, you got a problem. And they, the guy said, what? And I said, they're going to paint these walls tomorrow. Why are you putting these face plates on and these telephones attached to it? I said, if you leave that telephone on the floor, you know what happens? Someone's going to walk on it. Uh, they're going to damage it. But if they spray the walls, they're not going to take your face plate off and cover it up. They're just not going to do it. They're commercial painters. They don't have time to protect your equipment. You shouldn't put face plates on and you shouldn't put phones or computer networks or patch cords before they paint the wall. They got to put texture on and they got to paint. Well, sure enough, two days later when I went back to check on the work, all the phones had paint on them. You know, the little dots, a little spray, because they use spray. So they're going to spray all over the place. And when they spray all over the place, it's going to have dots on it and things like that. So I use the term set finish. And set finish is when you put the faceplate on the wall. 
Now, I don't care if they paint over, you know, uh, if they paint over the cable. Some people take the cable and they write, you know, cable number one and do things like that and all. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I use a cable identifier. I don't have to worry about any of the cables and where they go. I can identify them within a second and make sure that they're properly labeled. I don't care if it hangs out and they spray over the cable. It doesn't bother me at all, but I don't want them spraying over my finished jack. And you can't blame the painters if they do. That's your fault. You did that. So in a construction setting, they're going to come in and they're going to paint the walls. Hey, thank you for watching the video. Very much appreciate it. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And I, if you like these things, if you really think my videos are great and they help you out a lot and you learn things, then subscribe because that's what YouTube looks for. The subscriptions, they look for how many thumbs up, comments, make a comment. Maybe you have a better way than I have. I know there's other ways to do things and I know that you might have a different way. Let me know what it is. Hope you're having a great day. Thank you for watching.